Welcome to Price Action Principles. This is Trading Arrange Module 2, Order Blocks, Breakers, and Fib Dynamics. I just want to kick off by saying, look, thank you very much to everyone. We've just got over 3,000 people in Telegram now. We've got 1,600 now on YouTube who are subscribed, and we've just ticked over 12,000 people today on Twitter. So amazed. I don't know where you're coming from, but um, look, I'm just really glad I can help. So thank you very much for your support and also sticking around. Disclaimer, as we always do, please note that any trades shown in the following content are for educational purposes only. Any risk taken should be borne by you and not me. So this is purely as it's educational, not intended as financial advice in any way, shape or form. So in saying that, I am not a financial advisor. So any advice that can be construed as specific in nature, this isn't me. It's not what I'm providing. It's just general, educational and a bit of fun. So I don't recommend the purchase of any trading pair, investment ticker, or any other financial instrument that could be appreciate or depreciate, and as such will not be held liable for your users or users' investments, good or bad. So do not blindly follow trading calls by anyone. Instead, just do your own research. And uh, past performance is not a guarantee of future results. And lastly, this content, if I haven't mentioned it before and you haven't heard it, well, here it is one last time. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. There is a spelling mistake there. That sucks. Acknowledgement. Uh, look, I did a fairly comprehensive uh, acknowledgement in the first module, which is essentially this uh, slide here. But I would like to say, look, the 2017-18 market, it absolutely kicked my ass. It gave me the hunger to learn and uh, it taught me to trade. So I'm, I'm actually quite grateful for that. CryptoCred, his videos are amazing. They still are, they're timeless. He's done some new ones. Highly recommend going and watching Cred's videos. Trader Main, so he's uh, got a fantastic Discord and I, I did notice that we had similar backgrounds to a certain extent as well with our trading when we kicked off. And yeah, he really inspired me to get back into the saddle. I don't know Trader uh, Main personally, but um, just viewing through his Discord and that sort of thing. Wrecked Proof, he's a, a price action legend. So a smart money concepts guy and uh, just fantastic with his public content and his professionalism. So hats off to him again. Emperor BTC, I had a spelling mistake in this one, so thank you to the, the audience member who picked that up. So Emperor, I met him in April last year, well, online. And uh, yeah, look, he gave me a voice to share my passion of trading. So he helped me out. Uh, he mentored me for a, a little while and yeah, I've, I've got nothing but thanks for him. And lastly, Inner Circle Trader. So the man is a legend. I've learned many concepts from Inner Circle Trader. He's uh, actually doing a, a mentorship, I believe, for free on YouTube soon. So Heads up for that one. I think it starts next month. So if you're interested, I learned so much from it and I can't recommend it enough. What's the goal of this course? So it's pretty simple. It's to explore in depth each individual relevant puzzle piece that are, in my opinion, critical in gaining a framework of understanding with regard to price action and particularly trading a range. So as a recap, we're going to be exploring the following in the form of modules, which we have market structure and Fibonacci, order blocks, breakers and fibs value area trading and volume profile tools, ranges and liquidity targets, trade management, and then we'll be putting it all together. Several people have asked me on my tweets when I've been posting if I'm gonna be doing a module that is putting it all together. So please just check this list, check the pinned tweet, uh, actually not the pinned tweet, but um, a previous tweet on my Telegram where I do mention that we'll be putting it all together. So with that being said, let's move on. So the agenda, we've got part one order blocks. So what is an order block? We have bullish order blocks, bearish order blocks, order block examples. I kind of feel like Oprah Winfrey here throwing this out to you. So everyone gets an order block. Part two, we got breakers. So what is a breaker? Bullish breakers, bearish breakers, and breaker examples. Part three, fib dynamics. So we'll have a, a fib setup recap. We have a market structure break recap, and then we have fib setups for bullish and bearish order blocks. We have a bit of self-learning and then conclusion. And, and here you can see a automatic 15 minute Binance, we've got a bullish order block that uh, price taps into to run up and then repeats again. So we'll get into it, but price, in my opinion, is wholly and solely fractal. So anything you see repeating on a higher time frame, even though this is 15 and is quite low, you'll see on a lower time frame, like a minute, you'll see an order block there. And uh, yeah, it replicates. Part one bullish and bearish order blocks. So what is an order block? So I first encountered the concept of an order block when I was digesting hundreds of hours of Inner Circle Traders videos on YouTube. So the idea and concept, it blew my mind. Uh, it does seem pretty apparent after you understand what you're looking for and you've trained your eye up. 
So the way that you can essentially describe an order block is where larger players, so whales, institutions, people with deep pockets, whoever, uh, it could just be a grouping of, of orders that are, that are coincidentally at the same level, but they essentially have their orders lying in wait for price to return to a level of interest. If their market bought at these levels collectively or individually, they would give away their game. So their footprint, uh, they would leave too, much, too large of a footprint and price would run away pretty quickly. So they essentially leave their orders in wait to get filled and then they have their trading targets. Who knows what they are, uh, what their game plans are, but we just, we ride the trend. So price will return to these order block levels and then move quickly away from them as the market moves in excitement after such big supply or demand is encountered. So you'll see it, you know, there'll be an impulse move up or down away from the order block where retracements to entry become very palatable for trade entries of our own. So bullish order blocks are red candles and bearish order blocks are green candles before these impulse moves up or down. So it's also worth noting that like price in general, order blocks can be found replicating on each and every time frame. So we'll find order blocks in the four hour and within this overall time frame, we'll find many more order blocks to capitalize. So like we looked at just before, within a four hour, you may have a two hour order block, one hour, 15 minute, five minute, three minute, one minute, one second, whatever. So let's take a look now at a couple of examples, but just here is a bit of a recap in, in big and bold. So an order block is a bullish or bearish candle before an impulse move up or down. So bullish order block. So we will go and have a look at these as well on trading view, but you can see here. So it's the last bearish candle before an impulse move up. And by impulse move, we mean a run right up. You know, so you can see there's another order block right there. And that's price comes down, trades into it and shoots off. And if you look to the right here, you'll see as price reacts at this level again within that order block, the, the, the bearish candle before a move up, it does it again. So you can see that there's still players who are interested in taking, pro, uh, taking part in the, in the market at this level and price runs away again. But unfortunately, the, the, uh, the supply becomes too much for the demand and we see a, a retracement. But look what happens. Price runs back into this bearish candle before a move up and we have reactions around here and it holds pretty well. So you can see that whoever's wanted to buy up here got their fill and perhaps they sold here knowing or thinking that price may retrace up uh, or they were waiting and wait down here. So yeah, there's many, um, many opportunities for order blocks to present themselves as we've seen here. And you can see as well, they have bearish order blocks and uh, all that sort of good stuff. So you can see when price returns to these levels that there is some serious demand. So when referring back to the last bearish candle before the impulse move up, as shown by the red circle, you can see that this candle and this area is mostly respected. Just check trading view for this one, so just bear with me. Here we go, so we've got that live now and we need to hide this guy because we will come back to this. Right, so there you are, this is it. So you can see as we zoom in, oop, there we go. So it's the last, last bearish candle before the run up and you can see that. And as we just talked about, then you'll see price trades down into this area here for uh, whatever the demand is. I dare say that's a Fibonacci relationship, which we can just check out from this level. And there is some, some moves there. As we talk about later in the course, we pull from a last bearish candle before an impulse move. That's where we're looking for a re-entry. So we, we can cover that later on. But yeah, you can see uh, even here before this move down, the price is respected in this zone here. And then we start to have a look at breakers and things like that, or even a bearish order block through here where price trades slightly above it and then runs straight through. And then yeah, um, I won't digress too far, but you can see that price returns to this level and then runs off again. And guess what that becomes? That's a bullish order block. So if price was to come down to this area in future, I dare say that we'll see some more reaction there. All right, we'll continue on with the course. So here's another one. This is the, um, the four hour example of a uh, bullish order block. So I've tried to, to get a bit of a mix match for you so you can see daily four hour 15 minute uh there is a five minute i think it might be a um a breaker in this one but you'll see there's there's a few options and a few examples that i've tried to show you so you can grasp the concept a bit easier now in this one just to be quite clear you can see that um as we zoom in so this is the last bearish candle before an impulse move becomes the reference point for the next impulse move in future aka a, a bullish order block so price comes through here. If we actually look on the six hour, I think, or even the daily, you'll see that this whole area here is actually a black candle before we move off and up. So 
although there's a bullish order block here, this whole section can be classified if you were trading on the daily as a bullish order block. And you can actually absolutely see it. So price similar to the previous example, price similar to the previous example, sorry, reacts at this level as strong support and demand in the form of a bullish order block. So price taps it. Uh, Rect proof loves the old one, two, three tap, but there's an extra one in here and then off she goes. So well and truly a bullish order block. Then we have a, another one. This is on the 15 minute on Coinbase with BTC USD. So the last bearish candle, you would probably be getting the, uh, a grasp of what we're looking for at the moment. And then price reacts away quite violently. But what we'll have a look at later on, and we talked about market structure breaks, is you'll see here, which we highlight later, there is a market structure break of this level, which then you'd be looking to get long. And you can see one, two, three, four taps of the bearish order block, and then price runs away. So we can just quickly go and check that one out as well on our second version here. And we have got, not that one, but this one here. And you can see right here, price comes down the last bearish candle. Let's just get rid of this guy. And you can see that price runs up, taps once, twice, three, then just four. If you, let's have a look at that. Just into it, you can see that wick is in there. So, and then price runs off. And this is the, uh, the, the breadth of the marketplace is an order block gets tapped, price runs up, there's a lot of demand and support at this level. Make a break in market structure, look for the retracement, she goes. So a bullish order block. So it's a down or bearish candle that reacts in a bullish impulse move upwards when price trades down to it. So why? Well, when you think about it, it comes down to supply, demand, and humans. You know, we're all human, we're involved. We talked about emotion in the market in, in module one, which you can go back and check. But think about this, right? So price rallies off after hitting an area of interest where a retrospective order block is now founded. So as price returns to this level where many orders are resting at this area of interest, we find a large buy wall sitting there in, waiting in the form of an order block. So let's say that you can see, and you've probably seen this before if you've done it, but you'll see a big, big buy wall or a big sell wall, but buy wall in this case because it's a bullish order block. So if you're a smaller market participant or you, you can see that someone's going to buy a shitload of whatever, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever, then you're going to start to try and front run that person to get your, your bid in. And why? Because you can see that big buy wall. So you want to front run it to get your fill, right? You want, you've got a bit of FOMO going on. So you've just chucked in, you've market bought, whatever, you've, you've thrown your limit order a bit higher than the buy wall and um, off you go. Guess what? A whole bunch of other people do exactly the same thing. And that's where the impulsive move moves away because people are thinking, shit, that's it, I'm on, let's go. And then price takes off. So it causes a shift in market structure. So especially if we're breaking a swing high as we talked about with the MSB, and um, then the buying sentiment changes. So what we've now experienced is a positive price movement and eventual trend change. So remember this last bit here. So a bullish order block is a bearish candle before an impulse rally to the upside. And um, conversely, what do we have? We have bearish order blocks. So it's exactly the same thing, but just in reverse. I'll just check to make sure we don't go. Ah, there we go. So Bitcoin there. So we will actually go and check this one out as well. So let's just make sure I've got that one on my chart. Oh, we have Matic there, which is fine. We can still roll with that. I'm running with a Surface Pro and uh, yeah, Google Chrome loves the, the RAM. So bear with me. And you can see here, we'll just blow the sky away. So you, we're not too caught up. And um, yeah, same, same sort of thing as a, a bullish order block. But what we've got here is price runs down, comes back up for a retracement, runs back through for a market structure break, comes up, retests, and then rolls straight through and down to an area before a, a trend change and then price runs up again. So what we're looking for in a bearish order block is the last up candle or a bullish candle before a run down in price. So when we come back up to this area, can you see how price rejects and respects this order block? So it does come in, it comes up and tests it, comes back down and um, it respects another bullish order block, which is down here. So you can see now how the market is formed by these, these bullish bearish order blocks. So yeah, as price hits this area, an area of interest where there is support, also known as bids or uh, a lot of interest in, in buyers, and price runs up. It tests that bullish uh, bearish order block again, sorry, and then blasts straight through it. But look what happens. We, we come up here and we'll talk about liquidity grabs later. But you can see that anyone up here who thought that they could get short in this area, or if they wanted to enter a short here, they're going to nestle all their stops above these highs, aren't they? 
I mean, how many times have you gone and placed an order and you've put the, if you're a long, you've, you've gone, right, I'm going to get long here. And you've put your, your, your short stop loss, sorry, just below this area. Guess what happens up the top? It's exactly the same thing. That is called buy side liquidity. And we can see here, and I am digressing a little bit, but we run to the right and just have a look at where, the, where we are now. We're at the top of the candle there. And you can see up the top here, all the stops would have been taken for a run down and beneath all of those old lows. So that's called stop hunts or, or liquidity grabs. So we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Oopsies, bear with me. There we are. Now look, we've got another one here for Matic. Uh, I think that's one we just looked at actually, we did. And we have got one here for Ethereum US dollar on the 15 minutes for on Coinbase. So you can see again, same sort of thing, price comes up, retest, comes back through for a market structure break, rolls down, another market structure break, comes up for a retest, and we'll cover these market structure breaks soon. And uh, then you find you have a, a bearish order block as the last bullish candle before a sell-off. So look at what happens when price comes up and trades within the candle's body. You know, wicks, people ask me, do you use a wick? And yes, I, I do, but where the candle closes, there's more meat, right? So that's where the majority of the trading has occurred. And that's why you're going to find a lot more support or resistance in the candle bodies. I do use wicks if pulling Fibonacci, and we'll cover that soon. But for this example, you can see that um, the premise and principle does, does work. So a bearish order block. So it's an up or bullish candle that reacts in a bearish impulse move downwards when price trades down to it or up to it. So why? Again, when you think about it, we've got supply, demand, and humans. So price sells off after hitting an area of interest and a retrospective order block is now founded. Price returns up to this level where many orders are resting at an area of interest. A large sell wall in this instant, not a buy wall, uh, in the form of an order block resides. And smaller market participants see the, the sell wall, sorry, and front run it. So they're looking to get their short positions filled or they're thinking, oh shit, I need to get out of this. So that's where um, perhaps it's only an assumption that a lot of noob traders get in and they see a price come back up to a level where they think, shit, I need to get in or out. And um, yeah, price starts to sell off. Once we hit a point where we've sold so much off, you'll see a sharp move right the way down and that's a liquidation cascade. So that's where a lot of people are just getting blown out of the water using futures, derivatives, what have you. And um, yeah, that's, you, you'll see many of them as we, we talk about them too. So not in this module, but um, so there you go. We've got a negative price movement and eventual trend change to the downside. So again, a bearish order block is a bullish candle before an impulse rally to the downside. Part two, bullish and bearish breakers. Rightio, let's have a look. So what is a breaker? Now this, in my words, these are all my words pretty much anyway, but similar to order blocks, breakers was something that I first encountered when watching ICT's videos. It did take me a little bit of time to get my head around this. And, um, you know, we're always still learning, but in my view, it's essentially a previously bullish or bearish order block that has been traded through and now forms um, or, or is encountered as support or resistance. So we'll take a look at an example or two in a minute. But just remember that a breaker is a bullish or bearish order block that fails to hold. And when price trades through, it flips to act as support or resistance. So if you look here on Bitcoin 15 minute, we have got a, a previous bearish order block. So remember, we have a, a bearish order block where, which is a down candle before a sell off. Look what happens when price trades up through it. It comes back up. We beat that market structure. So we're kind of thinking, hey, look, we might have a bit of a move to the upside here and price comes down and retests. We can see that price doesn't retest a bullish order block by any means. So we kind of think, well, hang on, what's going on here? And you, you check it and test it. And it's, although we talked about using wicks only, you can probably see from here that that wick is just kiss, uh, the body is just kiss perhaps, but the majority of action is in the wick as support. Price runs up, takes the liquidity again, takes all the stops, builds itself back up and price runs down for a market structure breakthrough here. You could probably think that you're going to get short here, but Price, you know, the trend changes. You've got this uh, series coming down this way and we talked about bullish reversals and you can see that from module one that this does play out. So then price blasts straight back up and through and then plays again and it comes back down. So such is the nature of the market. Then we have a, a Bitcoin tether. So this is uh, on futures, five minute, um, five minute bullish breaker. So this is um, an example I wasn't too happy with, but Again, we're using the body instead of the wicks because you can see like the rest of the price through here has been quite uh, even or 
or filled, if you will, body-wise, but then you've got this like spruik of a, of a wick up and down. So to me, I would just I would use the body here and you can actually see that price finds support. So when it trades up and through, it starts to find a bit of support here because there is no bullish order block that it's referencing down here as, as an entry until, although it does bounce slightly here, price runs down this way and guess what's over this side? You've got a bearish candle before an impulse move up. So there's a bullish order block. You'll find these everywhere. Next, we've got a bearish breaker. So this one is actually quite a weak one. Again, I'm just trying to show you how they look. So this is a bearish, uh, a bearish bullish order block turned bearish breaker. So it's a previous down candle that becomes resistance. And you can see that as price trades through here, you could look for an entry to short, but price shoots up and, and would sweep you off your feet. But through this area, look what's happening. So price is really struggling to beat that last uh, bearish candle before a move upwards or an order block as you'd think. So it becomes resistance. So just as a heads up for you in that respect, it'll take some time to find these, uh, but you will train your eye to them. Here's Ethereum four hours on Binance. So we have a previous bullish order breaker turned bearish breaker. So that's a, in theory, you would think that before an impulse move up, which we, we do kind of see one here, price runs right the way through and down. And we have a big market structure breakthrough here. So you can expect to price to run down come back up to retest uh, a supporter's resistance. And you can see here that last down candle before I move up, even though it's slight, we trade up to it, we find resistance. So price isn't able to, to break through and then trades down as a result. This is a Bitcoin bearish breaker. So we can see again, this is well and truly a bullish order block in my opinion. Price trades down to it from an area that's of interest through here. This whole area probably could be described because, um, oh, actually fairness, it's four hours, it's not low time frame, but you can see that it's a last bearish candle before a move up. And then as price trades back down through it, it struggles to try and beat the height of this candle. So you can see that that does act well and truly as support, uh, as resistance, beg your pardon, from a previous area of support. Now we've got part three. So this is Fibonacci dynamics. And um, yeah, let's have a look. So in the previous, beg your pardon, sorry, in the previous module, so we explored uh, in market dynamics in Fibonacci, a concept of entry fibs. So these were introduced, we explored the anchor points, entry levels, and then the, ta the target levels too. So what we're gonna do now is combine the entry fibs with order blocks and then also breakers as Inner Circle Trader intended. Again, credit to Inner Circle Trader. Um, I learned these from him. So I'm just trying to help you understand what's involved in a range but we have to explore these component parts. So in doing so, we're gonna be able to cover in detail where the most logical sense to place an anchor point on the FIB tool um, is. So expecting that we're gonna be seeing a retracement to entry levels again and cast your mind back to module one. We'll do a quick recap down here in the next slide. Um, I just wanna be clear again in saying that these are ICT's concepts, so I'm sharing them here not to claim credit, but just to share with you guys what works best for me when trading a range. So again, the outcome of the course, it's to build an understanding of each component part of trading a range. So this is simply one of those. With that being said, let's crack on with a quick recap. We'll set up the fibs. We'll have a look just for ease of reading, not having to cross check back to a previous module. And yeah, we'll check out um, and explore the dynamic relationship of fibs and order blocks and break. Okay. So here we go again, this is the recap from module one. And if you're a first time viewer, and you're catching module two here, I recommend going back to module one. But if you are on trading view, you go and select the third item down on the left-hand side, which you'll see up in the top, that's your menu. Come down three, click across the fib retracement. And then once that's opened up, you have got style, coordinates, and visibility. If you go to style, I've zoomed out so you can see this, you have 0, 0 0.28, 0 0.618, 0 0.702, one, 0 0.786, and then you have negative 0.27, negative 0 0.618 and negative one. It doesn't matter if these are all in order that you've got the 10 or however many there in a row, that's fine. But people have asked me as well about um, including the negative sign or, or minus sign in front. And you literally just click on the, oops, sorry about that. You literally just click on the, um, the number and it'll highlight, just press backspace, wipe it out and enter whatever you want. And you could literally have any figure you want in this, but it probably wouldn't make sense if you're just randomly putting numbers in. So look, I don't, uh, personally prefer to have a background. I don't select the reverse of price options and um, yeah, I have labels on the right, but have them in the middle. So completely your call. Here we've got the entry fib background. So this is the recap from module one. You've seen the multicolor um, 
Technicolor uh, raincoat here. So as we look into the background of the fibs, we have a bullish fib setup, we have a bearish fib setup, where if you were gonna get long, you would anchor your one down the bottom of a swing low, zero would go to a swing high, and then you expect price to retrace into this area and shoot up. Well, shoot up's quite dramatic, but you'd be hoping that you can manage your trade to, to the extinction, extinction of it. And um, the opposite is true for a bearish setup. So your one would go on a swing high, zero would go on a swing low, expecting price to run up, enter into your FIB areas, into an order block area. Don't forget that for the bullish version as well and the bearish version. You're looking for a, a bullish order block or a bearish order block, and then right, price runs down. And again, you're, you're trying to follow it to extinction where you're gonna close out at a negative one. So we've got a, a series of colors here. So we have got the, um, the anchor levels. So that's the one and the zeros we just covered in light orange and teal. Then we have the trade entry levels of 618, 702, 786. If you're not sure uh, what the, the premise behind 702 is, it's the exact difference between 786, 618 divided by two. So that minus that, left with your figure divided by two, take that from 786 or add that to 618 and that's your number right there. And then we've got target levels. So I don't actually show it here, but zero is 100% a target level if you like. So you can trade, so you can pull a fib from swing low to a swing high, watch for a retracement, and then just aim for a zero. That's it. Or you can aim for these numbers here, because as we explored in module one, your targets don't always get hit. You've got to manage your trade, you have to protect your capital. And uh, if it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. So yeah, we've, we've talked about as well that all of these are essentially percentages. So if you were to, if this was 100% to a zero, when you're entering a trade, price comes down to 70% uh, retracement from where it was at its peak. And then if you were to, to trade from one to the zero, you treat that as one whole move. And then if you are lucky enough to have a trade that extenuates and eventuates to a negative one, that's actually a 200% move. If that's 100%, that's 200%. Same as being bear, uh, the bearish option, but look, it's just something to be aware of. So market structure breaks. Last recap, guys, I don't want to bore you. So a market structure break, in my opinion, is where a previous swing high or swing low, which applies to all time frames and can be used on all time frames, is run past, violated, traded above, through or below to cause a change or shift in trend to market sentiment. We talked about that just before where people perhaps are FOMOing when they see a sell wall or a buy wall and they, uh, they shit the bed and start going, right, I'm going to FOMO. And then a whole bunch of people FOMO and that's how uh, monkey see, monkey do. So market structure breaks are one of the key components that make up the basis of this course. A bullish market structure break. So a bullish market structure break, there's two versions here. At a one being a reversal point, price would run up through a previous swing high. We expect a retracement back to support. And bullish market structure break is simply a trend continuation where we uh, sequentially, continually, and uh, successively keep beating swing highs and market structure breaks to, to continue a trend upwards. Uh, the opposite is true for a bear market structure. So if you're not sure on this one, just revert back to module one and have a look at that one. So here we are, we've got order blocks, fib dynamics, the one day, you'll recognize these are all the same examples we gave before. I don't want to confuse people by doing one thing and then completely blowing your way by, by going somewhere else. And it's just not fair. So from we'll jump into it, you know, from the examples shared at the start of the module, we've built and we're building upon the concept of entry fibs and order blocks. So in the image to the right, you'll see that there well and truly is an order block that shows price reacting at that level. And what we're gonna do on the next slide is have a look at how our Fibonacci levels can be introduced here. So you can remember this from uh, up the top and also module one, you can see that we're aiming for an entry point here, Fib anchored on swing low before impulse move up. Now, why didn't we use this? Well, if you think about it and you were to pull a Fibonacci level from this, this area, which is the previous order block we were just looking at, then you're gonna find that as you go for an entry, you get stopped out because you're gonna be tapping this area or you're gonna be very close to getting stopped out. So what you're normally doing, especially on a one day, is you're looking for the last bearish candle before an impulse move up. And if you were to minimize this area or shrink it down, it's probably gonna look a whole bunch like that. So that's how I would do it. I would pull uh, from this level, the last bearish candle before this initial rally up, and you can see that price does respect this, uh, this concept where it comes down from the all-time high, down or the previous all-time high, down to the entry-level fibs, and then price reacts and moves on. Now, in terms of market structure, we haven't beaten market structure over here, and there's a good reason for that. There was none. So before we hit all-time high here, there was no market structure. So how do you really enter that trade unless you 
you're, you're just using the, the overall premise of this triangle. Bear a shorter block, a bullish shorter block, sorry, up to all time high. And then you're going to expect it to come down to the 618, 702, 786 level. Now, it doesn't work all the time and, and you'll figure out where best to anchor your fib points on. But this just gives you a good concept and grasp of how you can do it when you don't necessarily have the structure to break to confirm that you're bullish. So there you go. And you can read through this. So it's critical that you use the swing low before an impulse move up for this technique to work. And in this example, based on Bitcoin here and all time highs we've talked about, there is no overall reference to a market structure break. So um, it's difficult to, to frame your directional bias apart from being a permeable. But um, yeah, just bear that in mind and keep that as a heads up. All right, let's have a look at uh, the next one. So this is the four hour one that we visited before. And we talked about this area here, probably on the daily being a bit of a, a larger overall order block. So previous to the one day example, refer to the chart on the right. So we talked about this and we've been through this before. So probably no point wasting time um, again, but the premise is uh, order block, bearish bullish order block, last uh, down candle before a move up and a retracement into that area. Let's just have a look. How does this actually look with the fibs applied? And you can see here, so using this area where the order block actually was, we can actually get away in this one with using and checking to see where price reacts. So the FIB pulled from the swing low before the rally away, which was where the bearish order block was, uh, bearish candle bullish order block, and price runs up. You, you slap your FIB up top, referring to your colors here for your entries, as we've talked about. And guess what? I mean, price retraces into a yellow zone here with a 618, 702, 786, and I've circled it in red there as well. So you can actually see the price reacting in that area. Again, this isn't like a foolproof method, but you're going to start to see a few patterns forming here and you're going to, it'll start to blow your mind pretty quickly. So yeah, again, use the swing low before an impulse move up. In this area here, this was a, uh, this was the rally after the ranging environment, after the dump from the all time high. So yeah, that's a bit of a mouthful, but there was market structure break, which you could use here. Uh, you know, you can use it all the way through here where you're beating market structure up and down. So that's a, that's a valid one. So this is a 15 minute. Remember we said that we were going to look at things like one day, four hours, 15 minutes. Let's just take a squiz. So a squiz, by the way, guys, sorry, in Australian jargon is let's take a look. So um, here we have a, a last bearish candle before an impulse move up. So guess what? Again, back this way, what's this price reacting at? You can bet your ass that over this side, somewhere along here, there's another a bit, a bullish order block where price retraces into a, an area where there's demand and springs away quite quickly where people are, are really interested in this price. So you can see that price comes down. We have a series of dumps. Last hurrah comes up, really swings low. And I'd say that's some uh, a cascading uh, liquidation. Comes down and hits. So it's a very minor one, but still beats all of this liquidity down here. Nabs, if a lot of people went long in this area, price has just come down here to find where there's demand. And it comes up, it tests the order block, tests again one more time. And we come up and we actually start to beat this market structure. So if you see from this level here, and we come right the way across, you're going to see that that area is, is that's beaten this previous swing high. So guess what? You can put your fibs on, you can aim for your order block, and even if you aim for this level, you've just won. And then I'm not sure what price is to the right here, but you can go and check your own chart for that. But let's take a look now with the fibs applied. Again, same premise. You've got the colored chart here. You have your entry, your, your entry down here, sorry, the one, or anchor point, I should say, the one to the zero. Then you've got your area where you can expect the entry fibs to the entry levels to occur. And this one actually hits the 618. So price from this point up to here retraces 60, probably 70% to be fair. And then it reacts at this area and runs up. But look at this, we've drawn a market structure break here. Just to give an indication as to why prices run above. Now we've probably just gone equal with that wick, which tells us that above here, there's a lot of, uh, lot of supply. So there's a lot of people wanting to sell at these levels or short, uh, whatever the case is. And then you'll see that when price runs up and through, it goes up past this area where, where people are probably nestling their shorts, which again is buy side liquidity and people getting stopped out. So price, you look to here and you go, shit, I'm actually going to get short here. You, you enter this area or you enter this area. Some people, breakout traders will enter here and uh, they're going to put their stop up here, aren't they? And guess what happens? Price comes through, tests it comes back down and you think to yourself, shit, you know what? This is actually going to happen. So price runs straight back up very quickly and breaks through that area because there's liquidity above here. Liquidity, remember, is people's buy stops or sell stops. Next one is 
This is Bitcoin US dollar Coinbase, and this is on a 15 minute chart. This is a, a bearish order block example, right? So we've got a, a last bullish candle before a sell off. That's our bearish order block down there. Price trades up into the order block and it rejects. Then it tries again. And I bet you if we pulled a fib from this level down to this point here, that would retrace up to our entry fibs. So just know how the bottom level of the order block is also respected. So you have a, you have a relationship with Fibonacci from this swing high, this swing low up, but you also have the overall relationship with this bullish or uh, bearish order block, beg your pardon, that price hits and rejects at. So with our fibs applied, you can see, you know, you've got your chart here again. So don't forget, this is a, a bearish entry. You pull your one to your zero. So one down to zero, back up. And the reason why you're actually pulling this uh, entry fib is because the market structure is broken here. The swing low has been violated. Price has traded through it. It's come down to an area of interest, traded up, hit our entry points, smack bang in the 70 point, 7, 702. And then price has traded down again for another entry, which I'm saying is that you could probably find a relationship Fibonacci wise from here to here to here and price runs off. So again, into the same area. So this is, it's a phenomena, phenomena, phenomenon where um, you can see that there's a relationship. There certainly is a relationship between order blocks, bullish or bearish, and Fibonacci. I personally like to use the Wix for this. So um, yeah, we talked about bodies before, but I do still think there's value in applying price from Wix, especially when pulling your Fibs. The next one here, we've got Matic. So um, Matic is on the four hour, I believe, and that's right, yep. So price comes down, we've had a market structure break, we expect a retracement back up to test this area in the form of um, support uh, flip resistance, which we now have a bearish order block, which is a bullish candle before a sell off down. And you can see price comes back up, it tests the area and price runs back down before coming down and blowing right the way through for a liquidity run. And again, you know, we talk about these liquidity runs and um, yeah, you can see straight across here, if you were to draw an imaginary line, price trades up and above that area. And um, yeah, before you know it, it's probably, it's trading back down again because it's taken all that liquidity that rested up there in the form of people's uh, sell stops. And here you can see where fibs have been pulled. So this is still Matic in the breakdown here. We've got a swing high with an impulse move to the downside. So bullish candle before a rundown, we have a market structure break. Swing high, swing low. We've got our uh, orange colored entry anchor point. We've got our blue colored, uh, tealy colored anchor point as well. Price comes back up, trades into the entry level. It's our red circle just to highlight the area of what we're looking at. And then price trades down and through. So if you're entering or looking for this area as a trade, uh, as the zero, for example, you would absolutely win. So yeah, just, just be aware of that. And um, you're looking for that market structure break to occur. Next one here is Ethereum. So dollar 15 minutes. So we've got a, um, this example shows a bearish order block on Ethereum 15 minute time frame. And look how after a series of swing lows, they were beaten. So price continues to rally up to bearish order blocks for rejection at these levels. Price continues to do so until demand outweighs supply that results in a rally past these previous resistance points. So we can see here, we've got price comes through, breaks structure there to the downside, retraces back up, bearish order block before a sell-off. And we can actually call one of these a bearish order block too. And then you have price hitting this level, coming back down. Now you could actually find there's a fib relationship from this point down to here, back up. And if you were just aiming for that area to beat that swing low, you're laughing and you get it done. But you have to be careful because then you start to see a series of higher lows and higher highs and price then takes off again. Here's the fibs applied to it. So the reason that I'm showing you this one is because I wanted to just to show and demonstrate that you can take a series of trades differently uh, outside of these rules perhaps, but it's not recommended all the time. So here, if we just read this, there is an, uh, an overall trend that is set when market structure is broken. So this example shows that you can still enter trades even without a clean market structure break for the area we're looking to enter on. But from a high time frame perspective, the change is set and can sometimes work in our favor. So let's have a look here. So we have market structure break, price runs through as we talked about in the slide before. Price rallies back up for a tracement, um, rallies back up, sorry, to test this order block as resistance. Price runs back down, creates a new swing low where if we were to pull our fib from swing uh, high to swing low to our entry point, and then price runs down again. Now, what you'll notice here is there's a 
break in structure here, price runs down, but there's no break in structure here before we enter. So you can, in theory, enter at these levels, but that is and can be a little bit risky because there could be trend reversals or changes there. Now, when price runs back up through, it's our yellow box for our entry area, price then runs down again, breaks this market structure. So had you been aiming just for that zero to end, to sell at or buy at, I should say, because this is a short, then you'll find that you could actually make another entry here and uh, tackle if you were aiming for that swing low and you've just hit a couple of trades in a row. So fantastic if you can catch something like that. But on these smaller, lower timeframes, you'll find that price runs down and comes to an area of interest. And guess what's parked over here? Somewhere along there, there's a bullish order block. Price hits that, comes back up, higher, low, higher, higher as we've talked about, and then runs straight back up and through, clears any liquidity above here, which is the, I, I termed it wrong before. I said there were, it was um, sell, it is buy side liquidity as it's known because they are stop losses, not sell stops, sorry. Sell, stop, uh, sell stops belong down here. So as you can see, price comes back up. Uh, as it, before it comes back up, it hits this area where there would have been a whole bunch of people going along perhaps, aiming for a, uh, an area above this, um, this price action, but you'll see that down here, price just breaks it, liquidity is grabbed, nabbed, and you can see then there's a downtrend through here. So look, that is, uh, that's it from me for module two. We, we wanna look at some self-learning now. So by now you will have somewhat of an understanding of what an order block is, both bullish and bearish. You'll have an understanding of breakers. It's not the most comprehensive guide I've got here on breakers, but it's enough to get you going. And then we looked at Fib Dynamics as well. So the trick, there is one trick and it's pretty damn simple. You gotta train your eye in spotting these bullish, bearish order blocks, breakers, for your Fib Dynamics to work. So as they unfold on the chart, they're gonna offer extremely valuable insights to you. And um, you're gonna find out where there's support and resistance that lies for trade entry and exit. So go ahead and mark it up, jump on, get a few charts going, find a list. You know, I talk about having a list and I've got, I think there's eight projects, coins, tickers, pairs, whatever you want to call it, that are on my, my trading list. But look, like I said, I'm not a trading god or a trading guru. You know, I've just got a list that I like to, to curate and trade based on that. So I actually looked again today at a few different um, projects, coins, tokens, whatever, and I saw that some were actually doing better than the ones I've got. So, you know, it's all about checking weekly, maybe checking fortnightly, something like that, just to make sure that it still makes sense with what you're doing, because there's no point replicating failure, uh, not to say that's happening, but no point pushing shit up a hill, as we like to say in Australia, if it doesn't make sense. So go and work whatever you can out for yourself. Uh, go forth, make it happen, find what works, find what buggers the shit out of you and uh, change it up. Journal, journal is a big one. Don't forget as well, guys, when we're looking for an entry, we're usually looking for a market structure break as a determination and trigger point for us to either say, yes, there's a trend continuation or perhaps there's a trend reversal where we want to get in on the action at the entry points only, not uh, breakout trading is a completely different beast where you, you trade on the breakout past a market structure break. But for, for us, we want to get the most, the, the most discounted version we want if we're going long and the most premium version we can if we're going short. So yeah, study market structure breaks. Again, here, just a note, this is my personal approach in trading where I have eight to 10 charts. I don't have any more. In Australia, our, our uh, mobile phone numbers are, are 10 digits long. There's a reason they're 10 digits long and that's because humans can only focus on so much. So you can whittle off your phone number, your mate's phone number, but it's more difficult to try and manage more than 10 things. So don't have 50 charts. I've done it before and it's just a pain in the ass because you just start to, you know, you get that um, analysis paralysis, I think it's called, where you, you just, you have too many options. So you, you essentially don't take any options at all. It's some sort of paradox in that form. All right, so the conclusion. So again, just a, a bit of a placeholder and, and note here, these are ICTs concepts and, uh, and tricks that I learned. So go and check out his YouTube. He's doing a mentorship next month. So 100% go all in on that if you can. It's free. And uh, the, the, the purpose of this course, it's, it's to help you build a framework from nothing up to being able to trade a range. So I'm not sure of any other courses and it's not to blow smoke up my own ass, but um, what I'm putting out there, hopefully for free anyway, is um, gives you really something to start from nothing and get going, not to the top, but just being better than you were personally yesterday. Uh, not to say you're bad, but just to improve upon yourself by 
studying, practicing, and um, yeah, having a go. That's all it's about. So still to go on this course, we have ticked off these two now, market structure and order blocks, breakers, and fib dynamics. Still to come, value area trading. You would have seen all those fancy uh, graphs, uh, line charts, that sort of thing. I've, I've shared a few threads on that already. We also have ranges and liquidity targets where I've got some nice nuggets of wisdom, if you will, if I can use that term in there for you guys too. So we will look at different types of ranges, different types of timeframes to trade based on those ranges on a, a, a little formula I worked out, which is quite simple, but um, when you sort of break it down, it's actually pretty cool to work with and, and have a framework. As you will know by now, I like to have these frameworks in my own mind that help me build and put meat on the bones of trading ideas and concepts. So. After that, we have got trade management, and that talks about looking for a setup, setting an alert, managing that alert, entering a trade, and then taking profits as we have explored, to be fair. But you then get to go through and understand, you know, like, does this trade make sense? Like, why would I enter this? Why wouldn't I enter this? And um, just a bit of insights from me. Again, I'm no god, but, you know, I, I can certainly have a place a couple of trades here and there. And then we have putting it all together, which, which is essentially market structure, order blocks, breakers, FIB dynamics, value area trading, ranges and liquidity targets, trade management, and that's it. So don't forget that each one of these little component parts will make you, will, will hopefully, I shouldn't say make you because that's a bit wankerish, but will help you hopefully become a better trader. And you don't have to use them for trading a range. It's just simply the, the option and the technique I chose for this course because it's something I enjoy doing. So yeah, you can take all these little parts and just make them your own. That's all I've ever done is I've taken bits from, from different people and then made it my own. So uh, yeah, I wholly, wholly and solely encourage you to do that. Send me DM, uh, send me one Ethereum, I'll send you five back, you know, that old joke, but I certainly, you know, we, we won't be doing that. But um, yeah, look, just, just make a trading group. Send me a message. Uh, I can help you out where I can. But look, the, the, the premises don't be shy. You've got to get out there and you've got to lose some money, let's be honest, to be able to make it as a trader. And as I always say, you have to uh, lose um, like a pro to be able to trade like a winner. So we talk about risk management. I've done some threads on that as well. But look, that's enough from me for now. I think um, we've talked enough, which is probably about a 45 minute again uh, module. So that's 90 minutes so far. And we've got about 84 pages of, of material too, excluding all the ass kissing with um, acknowledgements and that sort of thing. Guys, that's it. So thanks for your time again. You know the drill. You've got to say hi to your mum for me. Say hi to the family. Look after your mates and yeah, stay safe, stay hungry, stay foolish. That's a really good quote I've seen recently. And um, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.